In this tutorial, we will be discussing vaporization and vapor pressure. It takes energy from molecules to go from one phase to another. Vaporization requires input of energy to overcome the attraction between the molecules, or what's known as the intermolecular forces. Only a small fraction of molecules in a liquid have enough energy to escape, becoming a gas. By increasing the temperature, the fraction of the molecules with the what we'll call the escape energy or evaporation energy increases. The higher the temperature, the faster the rate of evaporation by the high energy molecules at the surface of the liquid. The greater the liquid surface area, the faster the rate of evaporation as well. That's because there's more molecules on that surface, which means the liquid, the quicker the liquid becomes a gas or a vapor. Now condensation is the reverse of this. Molecules in a vapor state can lose energy through molecular collisions with other molecules. The result are that the molecules are captured back into the liquid when they collide with the liquid surface. Others may stick together to form droplets of the liquid. This process is called condensation. There's a difference in condensation between an open and closed container. In an open container, the vapor molecules generally spread out faster than they can condense. In a closed container, however, the vapor molecules have limited area to spread out, resulting in the vapor molecules condensing. Let's take a look at this in a closed container. Here we have a liquid at the bottom, specifically water. The molecules on the surface have enough energy to leave. Eventually it's going to get to the point where there's so many molecules at the top here that some of them are recondensing and going back down. This happens a little bit here, but the more molecules you have as a gas, the more likely it is for it to come back. Eventually it's going to get to the point where the rate of evaporation, which remains constant, is going to equal the rate of the condensation because of the fact that it's, the condensation will eventually slow down. And that's when those two things happen at the exact same time and the exact same amount. That's when we have dynamic equilibrium. Now condensation is an exothermic process, meaning that when the molecules condense, when they go from a gas back to a liquid, they're releasing energy in the process. Whereas vaporization is an endothermic process, when it's going from a liquid to a gas, the liquid is absorbing energy, making the molecules move faster and then escape. Both phase changes, both phase change processes are affected by the strength of the liquid's intermolecular forces. If there's weak interaction, the weaker the attraction attractive forces become, between the molecules, the less energy it, it takes to vaporize. The weaker the attractive forces, the faster the rate it is to evaporate. That's because there's not as much there holding it down into the liquid. For condensation, the weaker the attractive forces, the more energy needed for the vapor molecules to condense. So in other words, once they spread apart, they don't want to come back together again. Liquids that evaporate easily are said to be volatile. For example, gasoline, fingernail polish remover, things along those lines. They're typically non-metals, things that relate primarily to dispersion forces or van der Waals forces. Liquids that do not evaporate easily are called non-volatile, such as motor oil or salt water. Those have more intermolecular forces that are keeping them together. At a given temperature, the vapor pressure of a liquid depends on its intermolecular forces. The greater the strength of intermolecular forces, the things holding it together, the more energy is, re is needed to go from a liquid to a gas phase, and hence the greater the boiling point temperature. So here we have an example of diethyl ether, ethyl alcohol, and water. 
Water has the greatest amount of intermolecular forces with those hydrogen bonding. Notice it takes the highest amount of temperature, the highest amount of heat, in order for it to boil. Unlike diethyl ether, which is essentially considered non-polar, uh, non although it does have oxygen in there, boils at a much lower temperature at the same pressure. The liquid's vapor pressure is a function of temperature. The as the vapor pressure increases, the temperature increases. So if we look at going from a liquid to a gas, that's this line right here. As the temperature increases, the as the pressure increases, the temperature it takes for it to boil also increases. The vapor pressure curves the liquid gas line on the phase diagram. The temperature and pressure are at equilibrium at the liquid and gas phase, meaning they exist at the same time. When a liquid's vapor pressure is equal to the external atmospheric pressure, the liquid boils. This means boiling points of liquids change with the altitude. When pressure is lowered, the vapor pressure can equal the external pressure at a lower temperature. So at lower pressures or higher altitudes, it can boil much faster with less energy. If the volume of a chamber is increased, then the decrease in the vapor pressure inside the chamber occurs. So if we look here, here's something at dynamic equilibrium, meaning that it's vaporizing and condensing at the same rate. If we increase the volume, the pressure then falls because there's less collisions of the gas molecules. More gas then vaporizes and then the pressure is once again restored. The fewer vapor molecules pre present for the given volume, which causes the rate of condensation to slow. The molecules are not running into each other as often Therefore, they have no chance for collisions and then con condensing. Over time, the rate of vaporization will be faster than the rate of condensation, so the amount of vapor increases. Enough vapor accumulates so that the rate of condensation increases to the point where it is once again as fast as evaporation. Then the, once again, the equilibrium is reestablished. At this point, the vapor pressure will be the same as it was before. If we decrease the temperature or decrease the volume instead of increasing, you're forcing more molecules back into the solution, which means you'll have fewer gas particles. When the volume is decreased and the pressure rises, then the more gas condenses and the pressure is once again restored. So no matter what, if it's a closed container, it's going to go back to a dynamic equilibrium. When molecules of a liquid are in a vapor state, they exert a vapor pressure. The equilibrium vapor pressure is the pressure exerted by a vapor over the liquid in a closed container. When the rate of evaporation is that of the rate of condensation. That is when you get dynamic equilibrium or the equilibrium vapor pressure. And that discusses vaporization and vapor pressure.